Hello and welcome to another Tyco video. In this presentation, I am going to be demonstrating how to construct filtered measurements of a variable star. And in the next video, I will demonstrate how to apply transformation coefficients to these measurements. So to go ahead and get started, this is the image manager. And we first want to go to list, add images. And the data set that I will be working with in this video is that of a variable star. V0544 Andromeda. It is also available from the Tyco website if you navigate to the download page. So once you have extracted the data set, you can see that these are all of the available files. They also end in .fz extension. That simply means that the images themselves are compressed. So I'm going to do select all and choose open. And you can see that Tyco is automatically extracting these images. Uh, here is the progress indicator for that. And once it has finished, it will automatically populate the image manager with the extracted images. So we have a count of 155 images, and they alternate from B filter to V filter. Now, there are a couple of ways to proceed from here. What I like to do next is clean up my workspace. So I'm going to go back to list, add images, and simply select the compressed files and then delete them. And this ensures that you do not make the mistake of having duplicates in the future. If you were to do a select all, you would be including both the compressed and the extracted. So this just simply cleans up the workspace. You do not have to do this if you do not want to. So at this point, I would now like to start off by processing the B filtered images. So I'm going to go to selection by filter and I choose B from the drop down menu. And this will select all of the B filtered images. Next, I choose list, remove unselected, and now we have a count of 78 images, all captured in the B filter. Now, ordinarily at this point, the next step would then be to do calibration. So you would go to action, calibrate images, and from there you could supply a dark frame, a flat frame. However, these images have already been calibrated. So that step is not necessary. Instead, the next step is then to do alignment. However, a meridian flip occurred during acquisition of these images, and for reasons I can go into more detail later on, it is suggested to process the images that occurred before the meridian flip independently of those that occurred after the meridian flip. So at this point, what you might want to do is to identify where in the data set the meridian flip occurred. In other words, where in this sequence of images uh, it occurred. So one way to do that is to do action view images and this will bring up the image viewer and you could manually inspect the images so as you loaded up the images into memory now you could go and scroll through the list here and you could see at what point does it change so here it looks as i scroll through the list here that the meridian flip occurred at uh, index 51. now another way to do this to identify where the flip occurred is to go to the go to menu and choose max delta time. So if there is a meridian flip, typically this is where it will have occurred is the image having the maximum delta time. So again, that is index 51. So I'm going to click on this row and then I'm going to also choose the last item in the set. So I've now selected all of the images that occurred after the meridian flip. Now at this point, normally you could right click and choose remove or you could choose list remove. However, because the images are loaded into memory, we need to reset them first. So I go to list, reset, and now I can choose right click, remove. So now I have 50 images, all captured in the B filter. Now, at this point, we can perform alignment. So I go to action, align images. And if you are new to Tyco, the user guide has more information on these settings. I'm simply going to use the default. So I click okay. So we'll go ahead and give it a moment here to perform the alignment process again on these 50 images. Now, I will also make a comment that uh, when it has finished, my configuration of Tyco will automatically load the output of these aligned images back into the image manager. So it just did that. And you can see that here, the output, this is underscore A. That means uh, A is aligned. So if your image list is blank, you can go to list, add images, and manually navigate to that output directory. And from there, you would then add in the aligned images. Now, if you want, 
to have the same behavior where it automatically loads images. Go to settings, image directory, and check the box auto load output into image manager. Now there is a reason why the default is unchecked, uh, but I won't be going into that uh, in this video. So at this point, we have finished alignment. We want to go now to plate solving. So action, plate solve images. Again, user guide has more detail on the settings here. I'm just going to go ahead and click start. And at this point, it is uploading the sources and invoking the plate solve routine. So we'll give it a moment here to finish that. A solution has been found, checking verification status, and now it has finished. So now we have done alignment and plate solving. And at this point, we can go back to action view images. So here we are now ready to start generating measurements. So the first thing we want to do is identify where in the field of view is the target of interest. Now, if you see these white rectangles, that means that you have this option checked here, show photometry stars. I'm going to uncheck that to clean up the display here. So again, where is the target of interest? Well, it is a variable star and it is also, it is also a known variable star. So we can go to photometry, load variable stars, and this will present with a new window here, known variable stars. And as you scroll through the list here or click on different items, you can see that it goes to each one in the field of view. But the one that we want is this third item here, V0544 Andromeda. So I click on it and you can see that it is conveniently located in the center of the field of view. So I'm going to zoom in and then I'm going to double click on it to center it. And then I'm going to right click and choose create marker one and then right click once more and choose create marker two. Uh, why, why do we have two markers? Uh, if the object had motion, then the two markers could indicate uh, its movement. But in this case, it is a relatively stationary object, so we set them both at the same location. So at this point, we have now identified the target of interest. Next up, we want to validate the aperture settings. So I go to photometry, modify aperture settings, and for the inner radius, we want it to tightly enclose the object signal. So here what you can see I have specified seven pixels to be radius one. The dead zone is four pixels and the sky annulus is nine pixels. So these are the aperture settings that I will be using. So I click close. And the next step then would be to validate the star catalog settings. So you can go to settings, star catalog. And I like to use the Atlas catalog. However, in this scenario and for this video, I will actually be using AAVSO comp stars. So in this case, Atlas is just going to be serving as a starting point, and then I will actually be overriding the Atlas comp stars with comp stars from AAVSO. But for now, these are the settings I have for my star catalog. Again, I have Atlas, magnitude band is the B uh, setting, and filter is also B setting as well. So I click OK. And again, I mentioned I will be using AAVSO comp stars, but I just want to show you first what would it look like with Atlas comp stars. So I go to photometry, find comp stars, and this presents a window here. And this would be if you want to do manual comp stars. But first, let me back up even further and show you what would it look like if I just went ahead and did automatic comp stars. So these would be Atlas with automatic comp stars. So I can right click and choose create photometry from markers. We're creating measurements now. And if I plot this graph, what does that look like? So here we have a raw plot here. And this is that presentation again with automatic comp stars. So we, we've not done any work in trying to identify optimal comp stars. So could we improve upon this? Most likely. So now let's go back and choose again photometry, find comp stars. And here we want to just see if we can identify optimal uh, comp stars for our measurements. So from this trend line here, this is what is shown on the right. On the left, we have a filter selection. So again, the user guide has more detail on that. But I'm just going to go through here, right click and choose add active comp stars. The moment you do that, the moment you add your first one, you are now telling Tyco that you want to use manual comp stars. So in this case, we have one and only one comp star supplied and that is what it would use. But I'm going to create an ensemble here. That's what you can do if you're using Atlas. If you are using AAVSO comp stars, then you probably will not be using an ensemble. 
So I've now got uh, nine uh, comp stars here, and I'm going to do graph generate data to look at them in more detail. So what we are looking for here, again, keep in mind, you also want your plot to be that of computed magnitude versus time. So just keep that in mind. So with the plot on the right here, I'm looking for comp stars that have a nice flat horizontal presentation. So all of these look pretty good, uh, but I only really need five or seven comp stars. So I'm probably just going to delete these last two. So I can right click them and choose remove. And I can regenerate the data once more uh, just to keep it uh, up to date. And so these would be my comp stars. So I can go back here to the image viewer and choose create photometry from markers. So now I'm creating my second set. Again, both of these are with Atlas. The first one though is with manual and the second is with automatic. So if I plot both sets here, you can see the result. So I don't know about you, but I tend to think the uh, second looks much cleaner. So this is the result of having used manual comp stars. So if we wanted to now, I could simply delete that first set and then I could graph it by itself. And so this is a much cleaner looking uh, presentation, again, using manual comp stars. So, however, in this scenario again, our goal is to create filtered measurements and also later on to be able to apply transformation coefficients. That being the case, we then need to instead use AADSO comp stars, and we can also have a check star as well. So to do that, I'm going to zoom out a bit here, and I'm going to show you that setting I had earlier, show photometry stars. Again, these are all of the photometry stars that would be available if you're using Atlas. But now we're instead going to override that. So I go to photometry, download AAVSO chart, and this brings up a new window, and we give it a moment here. If you want to see the progress, you can navigate to the progress tab here, and it will show you it had to connect to a server and then download a chart. So that's the progress window if you want more detailed status on that. But here it is. This is the star table from AAVSO. And now you can see we have much fewer comp stars to choose from. So this is typical with uh, using this approach. So at this point now, we could go back to photometry, find comp stars. And as before, we have a trend line. However, there are much fewer stars on it. But what I can go ahead and do is right click one and choose add to active comp stars. But I probably also want to remove the Atlas ones I had before. So again, I'm just going to be using AAVSO comp stars. And I'm going to go ahead and add in a few more. And this will give me some idea as to uh, which ones might be viable uh, for the, this measurement. So uh, again, what we're looking for, a nice flat horizontal uh, presentation and ideally not too much noise. So these last two are fainter, they have more noise, so I will remove them. And the first one here, 10.6, uh, that might work as well, but I'm just going to remove it because it is much farther away from that of the target at magnitude. So here I've got now two possible comp stars. I think I will choose the first one to be the comp star and the second one will be my check star. So I can choose that second item, right click and set as check star. And when you do that, you can see that the color toggles to indicate that it is now a check star. So at this point, I can go back to image viewer once more, right click and choose create photometry from markers. So now we've got another set here, again, 50 data points, one for each image. And I can click on it and choose plot only selected. And you can see what that looks like. So here it is with the AAVSO comp star, and also one has been designated as a check star. Now if we plot both of them, you can see that there is an offset between the two, and that is perfectly normal, and it's to be expected. So one being with Atlas, and the other being with AAVSO comp star. So at this point now, I'm going to remove the Atlas one, because again, later on, I will want to show how to apply transformation coefficients, and that only works with the AAVSO comp star approach. So here we've got, this is the first of four sets. So this being B filter and before Meridian flip. So to go ahead and keep the video short, I'm going to go ahead and process the remaining three sets and then go from there.
Okay, so these are the four photometry sets. The two on the top row are from the V-filtered images, and the two on the bottom row are from the B-filtered images. So what I would like to go ahead and do now is to work on the top row. These are the V-filtered images. So I'm going to select these last two photometry sets in the list here and go to Graph Plot Selected. So as you can see, there is a bit of an offset between the before and after meridian flip. So I'm going to apply a magnitude offset here to correct this. So I select all of the data points that took place after meridian flip. And a couple ways to do this, I can right click and choose an offset from the menu, or I could use keyboard shortcut. So I hold down the shift key and up arrow. And as you can see, this brings the data points uh, together. So at this point, if we wanted to do so, we could also do a period search. So I can go to period, find period, specify an interval. I'm just choosing between one and 12 hours. Again, user guide has more detail on this if you want to read it. And then I click find period. And as you can see, it comes back with a top result here of 2.575. And if we want to, we can see how well that matches with the known variable, uh, the, in other words, the expected period of 2.566 hours. So 2.575 is pretty close to that. So this is not bad considering it is one night of data and one filter. Now I will also do this once more with the B filtered images. So I select these two and do graph plot selected. And again, apply a small offset here to bring these data points in line with each other. And again, if I want to do a period search, and it comes back with 2.566. And in fact, that exactly matches with the expected result here from the period column of the known variable star. So again, very good results here. The data looks pretty clean. And if we plot all sets once more, you can see what that looks like. So we now have filtered observations of a variable star. In other words, filtered measurements, I should say. And we can then apply transformation coefficients uh, to these measurements. So at this point, uh, we are pretty much complete with this uh, process. Now, if you wanted to do so, again, uh, the file menu here in the photometry set window, as you work through the, the data, I recommend saving it periodically so you can go to File, Save to Repository. So it's always good to uh, keep your progress saved and you can give it a file name like I did here and, and then click Save. So that's what I've done. I have my repository there, and as you can see, it has four photometry sets. So lots of different ways to do it. Uh, but another item to keep in mind as well, and I'll show this in the next video as well, is to export uh, the data. You can e export it to AAVSO format, and you can specify your observatory code, star identifier, and other options as needed. So chart identifier, it will be applied automatically from each photometry set. So these, these would be the settings that I might use. And if you're curious, you could choose export and give it a simple file name, one.txt, just to see what it looks like. So it's going to prompt you, do you want to see it for viewing? So you can click yes. And here is that result. So at, at this point in time, again, these are standard magnitudes. They have not yet been transformed. Again, that will be in the next video. But here are all of the data points from these four different photometry sets. Again, uh, we have the B filter images and we also have the V filtered images. So measurements from both. So that's about it for this video. Thank you for watching and see you next time.